Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Art of MMA. I'm Mike Ginn. That's the mechanic, Brandon Catino, back for another brand new episode. Uh, today, we got a little bit to talk about. We didn't have an episode last week, so we'll give our quick thoughts on UFC 55. Uh, we'll talk about that Holly Holm situation. Uh, we'll give our thoughts on PFL going international for the playoffs between New York and England, uh, London and Wales. Uh, we'll talk about Davison Figueredo. He's making some comments. We know he might have moved up anyway, but he may be moving up a little faster than we thought. And then we'll also give our thoughts. Who is the greatest MMA champion of all time? Not just UFC, MMA. Me and Brandon will bring back a little bit of a battleground episode for you guys and talk about that before wrapping up with our picks for UFC Vegas 56. Uh, Brandon and I both went one and two a couple weeks ago. His his lead over me has now stretched from three uh tenths to four tenths of a percentage point so he's pulling away he's pulling away hopefully brandon and i both do way better um i do want to make a couple quick announcements uh one we're gonna be taking a couple weeks off after this show uh brandon's in full fight training camp he's fighting on june 18th we'll talk about that in just a second he has a new opponent to talk about uh and everything going on so we will miss the uh upcoming uh ufc pay-per-view with glover and yuri but we'll talk about all that when we get back on the uh 20 first 22nd i'm not 22nd yeah the 22nd. 22nd when we come back on 22nd and we'll be back after that unless brandon just starts fighting all summer and then we'll do what we do but remember this is always fighters first and that goes for brandon and two he, he's included i know he's family we gotten used to him but you know he's got to go back to his day job eventually uh brandon how are you buddy doing well oh man doing well uh, i'm not gonna lie i'm a little oh, tired but uh, that's what we're doing sorry. When, we, when you're doing four rounds of spar with uh, Julio Arce. You can say it. Julio kicked your ass. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, I got no problem, man. Yo, he, he, he got me good today. Uh, it's all good. That's what you guys do. You train with the best, you become the best, right? Yep. Uh, so what happened? Now, uh, Gary Mack is out. He got sick. Anthony yep. Dill's stepping in. He's a hey. so-so MMA fighter, but he's a little better kickboxer. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, so like I said, Gary Mack is out now. My new opponent is Anthony Dill. He's another southpaw, just a little bit shorter, and he and he trains out of a Bill uh, Al, a Bill Algio school. So it should be interesting. You know, like I said, this is his first um, a pro kickboxing fight. Like I said, he's mo- he's mostly a, a, a MMA guy, but like but like we always talk about, I'm gonna let him know that there are levels to this game: MMA striking, kickboxing striking, two different worlds. And I'm gonna let him know June uh, June 18th. I mean, you never want to sleep on an opponent, but I think his biggest challenge is coming up in weight, right? Because he's normally a featherweight. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, so yep. You're going to have some usually, size yeah, on yeah, him. Yeah, he, usually, he usually fights at 145, so this fight he's going to be at 155. Like, like I said, my, my original fight with Gary Mack was at 160, but since he's coming up, they want to, they want to try to go as low as low as possible, And which, of course, 155 is no big deal because usually, usually for my kickboxing fights, that's where I fight at anyway, so. It's no big deal. the the weight the uh, the weight's coming off nicely still. So I'm good. I'm on point. Like I said, June 18th is gonna be is gonna is gonna be a show for you guys. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Uh, got quite a few mechanic shirts sold. So go over to fightersfirst.shop. Uh, you get them today. You might get them in fight time for fight time. They usually take about 10 days. So go ahead and order real quick. Hopefully we get them over for fight time. I've already seen a lot of the uh, mechanic shirts sold. I wore one. Actually, funny enough, not on this show. I'm actually wearing the uh, Buffalo Allen, uh, New Japan, Bad News Allen uh, shirt uh, today. But uh, I actually wore a Brandon shirt on Crossing Borders on Monday. So you can go check that out. Uh, Of course, he's rocking his kicking his shirt with his buddy Tim, the best looking duo on all the network. You know what's up? I know I got a face for radio. You ain't got to tell me, bro. (laughs) If I could put like I like I intro today with Yoda. If I could put Yoda on this side for the whole episode and you just saw his lips moving, you wait till I figure that out. You'll never see my face again. Uh, And then you won't be the best looking because then Yoda's kick your ass. Yoda's way better looking than you. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's talk about a couple things before we get into the show. Uh, Definitely check out fightersfirst.shop. Support the show. Support the network. Let our apparel be part of your journey. Of course, we just added Justin Muslia not too long ago, working on other fighters as well. Got all the professional wrestlers like Dynamite and Bad News, uh, Davey Boy Smith, working on some boxers as well to join Justin Rolfe. So we're trying to make this a whole big family. And, of course, yours truly over there, the mechanic, Brandon Catino, uh, his collection's flying off the shelf. So go ahead and get it while it's hot. 
Uh, we're always putting new, new stuff in there as well. So keep an eye out for all of that. Uh, Brandon, last we talked, we were previewing UFC Vegas 55, Holly Holm and Caitlin Vieira. Um, weird split decision. Uh, give your quick thoughts on that on that card and, and on the main event. Yeah, man. You know, like I said, I was I was I picked Holly Holm. I was rooting for Holly Holm, but the judges they didn't they didn't see it that way. You know, like I said, uh, you know, there were there were times like I said, it was a close fight. Uh, like I said, I think I think the round I think the round that comes in question is is the is the third round. Uh, I, I believe so. Again, like it's all about a few rounds were in question. Yeah, it's it's all it, it's it's all about sub, uh, you know you know subjective. What is it that the judges are looking at? Their their point of view, their angle. You know, like I said, when we're watching on TV, we get all the angles. But when they're sitting there in that chair, there's there, there's certain things that they can see and can't see. You know, they they are hearing the sound effects of of, of maybe a strike that's really working or or what. So, I mean, like I said, I I I I. I I still thought Holly Holm won the fight, uh, but the judges, but the but the judges thought uh, otherwise. I thought Holly won, but look, watching it back a second time, I didn't see a problem with the decision. If that makes sense, yeah. Like when I, when I watched it back, I was like, I, I can see how they went the other way because a lot of times Holly didn't connect. There were times that uh, Holly was doing more just to try to stop Caitlyn from doing what she does. Um, and I thought Caitlin was trying to do more at certain times. I still thought Holly won the fight, but that, I thought it was very subjective, and I, I, I didn't have a problem. I didn't think it was a robbery. Um, I just think it was a matter of opinion in that case. I mean, we have a lot of cases of MMA judging being crazy, but I don't think I don't really think this was one of them. Uh, and then also, kind of funny enough, split decisions. You know, Michael Pereira won that fight against Ponzinibbio, and the funny thing about that is that I got a bone to pick with with Michael with Michelle Pereira. He went out trying to pick a fight with Jorge Masvidal. He knew damn well the whole story behind it, but wanted to leave it at just the screenshot of Jorge doing the thank you sign or or prayer sign to his wife, right? A, his wife, let's clear this up on air. His wife slid into Jorge's uh, DMs first to congratulate him or something or wish him well on a fight or something like that. Mm -hmm. And all Jorge did was like this saying, thank you, appreciate the love type situation. Pereira was trying to angle for a fight and use his wife in the DMs as a way to like get a fight. First of all, Masvidal is not hard to find. And you know, I mean, what well, was plus? I was gonna say this all happened before, before, before he, uh, before he even knew his wife. That's what that's what she came out and said that that like like this all happened before before her and uh, and uh, Pereira had even got together. Well, first of all, Masvidal never followed her. She slid into his DMs. And he had nothing to do with it. All he was basically is saying thank you, like yep. you know, appreciate the love, like type shit. And you know, Pereira is going to try to blow it up. Masvidal is not hard to find for a fight. He's trying to get that fight with Connor right now. That there's all he's always willing to throw down. So I don't think it takes very much. Get a couple more wins. I'm sure Masvidal will know your name. But otherwise, I don't think he gives a damn about you. Um, and also, that was a split decision. It wasn't like a really big victory for Pereira. He won. I think he won, in my opinion. I don't know about you. But yeah, no, yeah, no. He came on strong. Like I, like I, I, I would definitely say he probably took the first two rounds, and then the last round is when uh, Pon, uh, Ponzinibbio came on, and he took that round. And there was a lot of great fights on that card because, I mean, you had Njoko, Njoko getting that big knockout over Todorovic. Uh, you had Ricky uh, Richie upsetting Viana, in my opinion. I thought that was an upset. Uh, you had Park getting a split decision over your boy, uh, Eric Anders. Uh, Bunch of good stuff on there. Uh, Medic actually showed up the one time I didn't pick him. <laughs> he got the TKO. Uh, and then, unfortunately, at least Reed, I don't know what's up with her. Like, we thought maybe it was the division, but then she ran into Sam Hughes and she got knocked out too. So uh, maybe she's just not ready for the UFC. Maybe she needs to go back to CFC for a couple more fights. But, you know, it's when you get called up too early sometimes you're stuck in that no man's land. Like, where do you go? Right, Brandon? Like yep. you've already graduated from CFFC into the UFC. If you get demoted, do you go to Invicta? Or do you go to CFC? You know, where do you go? Yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, I mean, that's what happened with, uh, with uh, Angela Hill. You know, she, she was on the ultimate fighter. Okay. I got into the UFC, you know, didn't go her way. Then, then she went down to Invicta, got some W's, became the champ there. Then boom, she came back to the UFC and she was on fire. So. You know, yeah, maybe I, mean, I think I think Elise Reed personally, I think she needs more experience. I, I just don't think she's ready for this level. Yep. But 
that's that. Uh, that's our quick thoughts on that. Um, one other thing real quick. I'm really looking forward to July. They just announced on ABC Brian Ortega versus Yari Rodriguez. That is going to be crazy. I'm looking forward to that. Um, any other things you're looking forward to before we jump into the show? I know there's a I lot mean, of fights being announced. I mean, I was going to say – uh, I was gonna say that I think that card, I think that card's gonna be is gonna be local for me. So it might be, it might be, might be in the state over. I think that card's gonna that be was in Long Island, right? Yeah, I think so. That's the rumor. So that's I mean, I don't think they've officially though, right? announced it yet, but that's a long trip for you, though, right? That's like an hour and a half, right? Uh, more than that. Well, it depends on the traffic, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, with traffic, that's like three, four hours. Yeah. Um, so I was like, it might be next to you, but it's not next to you. <laughs> yeah, that's like when people say to me, like. Oh, there's something down in Miami. Why don't you go check it out? And I'm like, four hours. <laughs> That's how long it takes me to drive to Miami. Uh, Orlando's like an hour and a half. Like, it's not like right next to me, no. Yeah. It might look close on a map. It may say the same state, but no. Huh. Anyway, you ready to hop into the show today, Brandon? Yes. Let's get to it. All right. PFL announced last week. Of course, we didn't get to talk about it. They're going to be doing some international traveling for the uh, playoffs. They're going to do a show in New York City. They're going to do a show in London, and they're going to do a show in Wales uh, for all the playoffs. They had Kayla and all the crew over there promoting it. Uh, of course, they're jumping back in action, I believe. Uh, is it July 1st? Yep, July 1st. And they got Kayla versus Julia Budd, which is a fight we thought we might see in the playoffs. But then, of course, Julia lost, even though she still got points because of the whole Fabian weight miss. Yep. But we're going to get to see this in the regular season, so that's going to be a great fight to take place. That's the one challenge we thought. Maybe her, maybe Pachenko, uh, a couple people to challenge uh, Kayla. So that's going to be fun. Uh, what are your thoughts on them going international and doing some of this stuff overseas and maybe even leading into what they're talking about doing a pay-per-view schedule next year? Yeah, no, nah, man, uh, I think it's cool. You know, like say, they're, they're trying to go into, into other markets. You know, let's see. Let's see how let's see how they do. Like I said, you see you see Bellator do, doing their shows in England, how how they've been killing it. You see You see the UFC doing their shows over in England. They've been killing it. So they're just doing the same thing to me. They're they're trying to get their foot in, uh, you know, and 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 uh, and, and uh, see what happens. And I'll tell you what, that July first card is going to be your dream. Right? It's like you love the ladies' fights, and they got Pachenko and Jenna Fabian. That's going to be a striking battle. So that's going to be right up your alley. That's going to be a fun fight to watch. Uh, we got a lot of the ladies. We got the welterweights on there: Roy McDonald, Ray Cooper, uh, everybody on there. So it's going to be a, a fun fight to get them started before they roll into their second as they roll into their second half uh, down in Atlanta. Um, so that's going to be fun to watch going into the playoffs. Yeah. Um, did anything from the first half of the season really jump out to you? Do you expect to like, who do you really expect to be like, I know it's way too early to be picking, but who do you really expect to be coming out as the champion in some of these divisions? Well, well, like, like I said, I mean, the only thing that really, that really was a surprise to me was just Ray Cooper, the way how he came out, you know, he missed weight. The way how he looked and everything like that. So, like I said, you know, nothing came out yet. But like I said, you know, you never know if there was an injury or anything like that. So that really, that really was the only thing. Like I said, you know, Rory, Rory, uh, Rory McDonald was he was Rory McDonald again. You know, the Red King came back, did his thing against uh, Brett Cooper. Uh, yeah. You know, Anf- you know, you know, Anthony Pettis looked real good. You know, he looked he looked, looked like the old Anthony Pettis. Uh, so. I mean, you know, I think, I think, I think the only division that I'm not really too sure about is really what's going to happen in in uh, in uh, featherweight. You know, uh, I think, I think everybody else is like say, like to me, I still feel like saying Anthony Pettis is is, is kind of him, him and you know, like I, I think he's still like probably the favorite now, and like uh, Roy McDonald, you know, since you know since Ray Cooper t- he took that step back, but uh, but yeah, you know, the, that that really that really was the only thing that kind of. Threw me off was just you know Ray Cooper missing weight and then just kind of just the way how he looked in this fight. Yeah, Alex talked about on Crossing Borders this week because we were talking about a fighter that missed weight for one of the shows uh, recently last week in uh, Mexico for the Luke's show, and he said the same thing. It's usually because of an injury or something they didn't disclose that caused him to get off their schedules. Very rarely is it somebody really just blatantly coming in off weight. There's usually usually a reason because um, everybody's professional. They're trying to, to make weight, you know. Whether yep. it's Oliveira with the scales being different or or whatever the case is, there's usually a pretty good reason. Most people aren't just blatantly like, I don't care about my weight and I'll come in. Uh it'll be interesting to see what Patty Pimlet comes in next time he weighs in, but <laughs> but until then. Um, but I'm excited. I think PFL going overseas is gonna be really cool for for the promotion. Uh they yep. continue to grow to the like they're trying to do some pay-per-views next year. Uh Kayla's already said this is the last year she's doing the tournament. 
Uh, so next year she's going to be doing big fights, like whether it's cross promotion. I'm sure if Clarissa Shields can get a couple wins this year, maybe that's something they might be interested in just for pay-per-view numbers. I don't think Clarissa's on that level, but you know, there's everybody has a puncher's chance and there's very few female punchers better than Clarissa Shields. So there's that. So it should be fun. should be exciting. Uh, PFL continuing to grow before our eyes. You know, I still remember the world series of fighting and, and to see where they are now. Like, I thought they were a legitimate contender back then, and then they kind of just went, yep. thanks to Ali's uh, crap behind the scenes. You know, Don Davis and all them kind of got involved. I, even Ray Seffo doesn't really know if it's technically still World Series of Fighting and just evolved into PFL or it's a whole new business. Like, when I interviewed him, he was kind of like, eh, I'm not sure. But, you know, it's it's definitely evolved into something that's continuing to evolve. And Don Davis and all those guys have big dreams and big goals to make a really big promotion, so. You yeah, know, you know, of, Alex, you know, Alex, you know, Alex Rodriguez right there, you know, a new investor for them. Yeah. And, and they throw in a lot of money to keep certain talent like Kayla. They matched her Bellator deal. They brought in Anthony Pettis, Fabricio Verdum last year, Rory McDonald. Like they're bringing in names, not just, you know, nobodies. Like these are yep. champions. So it's going to be, yeah, you know, your boy Jeremy coming. Stevens, you know, you can't forget him. Your boy, Jeremy Who? Stevens. Who? <laughs> Exactly. That bare, the guy's going to go to bare knuckle? Oh, my goodness. He fights Clay Collard again. He's going to be in bare knuckle real fast. And don't sleep on Clay Collar from winning that division this year either. Because right. he was this close last year. Uh, moving on, speaking of divisions and champions, we announced a couple weeks ago uh, it's going to be Brandon Moreno and Kai Care France this summer in an interim title fight while Davidson Figueredo recovers from a nasty hand injury, finger injury, um, that he's going to probably eventually need surgery for. He's been trying to avoid the surgery, as I'm sure most fighters do, but it looks like he's going to have to have surgery. So he's going to be out towards the – I think he said he could be back by December. Um, he was insulted. He was absolutely insulted. Uh, we mentioned a while back how both Moreno and Figueredo's bad blood had gotten so bad that both of them wanted to fight Kai Kara France. Neither one wanted to fight each other. They wanted to move on to a different fight. Um, Figueredo, for his part, is all about the Kai Kara France fart. He, he hopes he destroys Brandon Moreno because Brandon Moreno's camp kept calling him monkey and some other things, and he felt like it was a racist insult uh, from the Mexicans to the Brazilians. And then, you know, overall, you have the trilogy slash quadru- quadrilogy, whatever you want to call it, if they fight a fourth time. Um, and, Brandon, we've talked about in the past that Moreno – I mean, sorry, Figueredo's probably going to move up to band and wait sooner than later because it's hard for him to make the flyweight uh, limit. What do you make of all that? Yeah, man. Like, I really thought he was going to move up once he lost the belt to Marino. But then I think they probably said, oh, we'll give you a rematch. So he had another shot at the title and he won it. So that's why he's still there. Um, like I say, I think, I think everybody thought he was going to move up to 135. And I'm pretty sure him probably being a former champion will maybe give him a – I mean, he couldn't he, – if he moves up, he maybe could get an instant title shot, you know, against uh, Aljo if possible. Because like I said, you know – who knows when uh, T.J. Dillashaw is coming back? Uh, you know, so he could he could automatically be a uh, 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 yeah, next to mine. Yeah, I mean, well, he's got a he's 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 got to get October. through the uh, USADA pool as well. October, he's already in the pool. October. Yeah. So I mean, hey man, it is it is what it is, man. Everybody everybody's talking until something happens. You know, like like you know, like I said, he's still the champ. Uh, you know, he still you know he still gets pay per view points. Still gets he still gets paid like a champion. So until he decides to, you know, relinquish the belt, you know, he's still a flyweight champion. I mean, for one, I had this whole rant last episode about the interim titles, right? Like, you know how I feel about the interim titles. I think they're bullshit. If a fighter is going to be back within, especially within the year, like he just fought in what was it, January they fought? Yeah. Like, he, if he could be back by November, December, there's no point to even have this interim title fight other than you wanted more firepower for – international fight week and all the stuff that goes on during the summer in, in UFC. Right. But Dana White has just gotten to this point where every fucking, excuse my language, but every like uh, number one contender fight all of a sudden has to be an interim title fight. Now, like they will, it's more money in their pockets. They can build it as a championship five round fight. Even if it's not the main event, it, it's just crap. If you want to have Moreno and Cara France fight to see who gets Figueredo next, have them fight. But that doesn't mean it has to be for an interim title. And 
even Figueredo said it was just a, it, they're fighting for a plastic belt. It's not the real belt. I got the real belt. And it even though I think, and you know I picked Figueredo, but even though I think that Moreno won that last fight, just like I don't agree with Aljo having the belt because I think Jan won. The truth is they have the belt. They are the champion. You have to show them the respect because they have the real title belt that they fought and earned on their shoulder. And you just keep throwing these interim titles out there like they mean something. They don't. They're, the fans know who the champion is. And if Moreno wins, what's he going to do? Run around saying he's still the champion. But you're not. You lost to Figueredo, whether it was fair or not. You lost. And it's it's time to end these interim title belts because, first of all, I don't think Figueredo would do very well at Bantamweight. I think he's too slow. I mean, I think he's a powerhouse at, at flyweight, and I think he bullies a lot of the flyweights. Moreno came in. He's he's fast and as strong as Figueredo, so they gave him fits. I think Figueredo's a home run hitter, but against some of the bantamweights like Aljo, who can wrap him up like a tarantula, uh, Henry Cejudo could wrestle him to the ground instantly. Dillashaw, who has lightning fast hands, I, I, I Peter Yan, Peter Yan would annihilate Figueredo because they're the same style, and Yan's just better. Like. It, it, I don't see a good matchup for Figueredo moving up to Bantamweight. That's just me personally. Like, I can't look at anybody. Corey Sanhagen, I think, is too long and strong for Figueredo. Maybe a Frankie Edgar if he wanted to, like, a marquee fight. Yeah. I just don't see it. Um, but I do agree with him on the Bantamweight issue. Or, I'm sorry, on the uh, interim title issue at Flyweight. I think it's a joke. And I think. Sometimes just give the champion a chance to recover. He just fought a five round war against Moreno. Yep, exactly, man. Like that's what that was the whole thing with Aljo. He, you know, they they wanted him to fight, you know, five months after he fought. It was like, you know, give me give me a break. Same thing, same thing with um um Francis Ngano, you know, it was like get, you know, give these guys some time. And he just wanted one more month. Yep. It's just crap the way it's all about the dollars. We know that. Anyway, uh Decided to bring back a battleground subject a couple weeks or last week, and we didn't get a chance to do it, so we're doing it this week. Uh, Brandon and I did a little bit of a, a show called Battleground last December, uh, a couple episodes to kind of bridge the holiday gap, had a little bit of fun doing it, just having a debate on a really cool subject. So I decided, Brandon, what better subject to do? We've talked about who's the GOAT a number of times, but the GOAT always hasn't always been a champion. I want to make it very particular. Who is the greatest MMA champion of all time. You can give me your number one. You can give me a, a few name, names if you want. But go ahead and get this conversation started. Who, who's on top of your list as the greatest MMA champion of all time? I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that you can uh, choose from. You know, like saying uh, right now, current, you know, uh, uh, Patricio Pitbull in Bellator is a good name. You know, Chris Cyborg uh, is a good champion as well. Uh, but for me, man, the top two people I'm going to go with are GSP and uh, Anderson Silva. Those were really, those were really the top two people. I think Anderson Silva really still has the most title uh, defenses, or is that Demetrius Johnson? They're like right next to each other. Do you um, think? Do you think that his the way his career ended was like eight straight losses? Like, does that diminish that? No, because you're because you're you're talking about champions. To me, to me, to me, this is when this is when you're a champ. Not before you're a champ. Not after you're a champ. This is when this is when you had the belt. You defended it. How were you as a champion? So. That's why that, that's why that's why I still got Anderson Silva up there and I still got GSP up there. So I agree with you with GSP. Uh, Anderson Silva was always one of my favorites. I do have GSP up there very highly. Um, and even though he is GSP is actually the cover of this segment, um, because when I think of a champion, I think of GSP. Like he's been the cover child for being a champion in the UFC, even though, you know, he had the thing with Matt Hughes and Matt Sarah where he lost and got the bell back the way he finished his welterweight run with Johnny Hendricks, which was very debatable. Um, but then to come back and win the belt against Michael Bisping at a higher division, uh, as a champion, I don't think there's very few in this business that stand above him. But as I was thinking about this subject, there was a guy who actually stood above him in my mind. And I hate to say this, but John Jones. John Jones, as a champion, from basically 20 years old, in the UFC when he started, and I think he won the belt at 22 or something like that, like has been the most dominant champion we've ever seen. When Daniel Cormier got the belt, he came through and ran through Daniel Cormier before he got more issues, lost the belt, came back, won it, and dominated again. The guy's only lost one fight in his entire career, 
and that was by disqualification, you know, to Mark Hamill. Like, there, there is nobody that's ever really gone toe to toe with this guy. We've had close fights like the Dominic Reyes and Tiago Santos and stuff like that. Oh, they were in one. Yeah, later in his his fighting career, but especially during John Jones' prime, like he just annihilated anybody who got in that cage. I mean, the closest he came to losing that belt was when he broke his toe against Chael Sonnen, and the ref didn't see it. So he ended up stopping Chael Sonnen, and then they realized his toe was barely hanging on. Um, I, John Jones, to me, and, and I put some, I put a little bit of weight into somebody like Khabib who walked off uh, undefeated. I think that's something that might never be repeated in MMA, um, but I don't think he defended the belt enough times against enough people. Um, but then I also look at Daniel Cormier, two division. Uh, Connor won two belts. You know, Jose Aldo was the featherweight division for a long time. Max Holloway, another guy. Fedor uh, around the world as a champion. I just don't think Fedor fought the level of competition that some of the UFC heavyweights were. Um, and we never got to see that. We just never got to because of contracts and other things. Um, I look at Alistair Overing from Strike Force to early days in the UFC when he was just a monster. Um, and I look back in the days, I look at somebody like Randy Couture, you know, between the heavyweights and light heavyweights was one of the greatest champions of all time. Um, we never really got to see what Royce would, Royce Gracie would look like as a champion. Cause it really wasn't a thing back then. Yep. It was more like, you know, trophies and stuff like that. Um, which is a shame because Royce and obviously Ken Shamrock back in the days would have been top tier, but I think my, my money, I think John Jones, um, we may never get to see John Jones as heavyweight. There's been a lot of talk of him coming back this summer. I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, him and Stipe continue to say different things. Uh, one wants to be ready early. One wants to be ready later. <sighs> John Jones already had two years to get ready. If he's not ready by now, I don't really know when he'll be ready. Uh, and we don't know what's going on with Francis Ngannou and that whole situation with Fury and his contract and everything else. But I think as light heavyweight champion, I don't think there was a better champion than John Jones. And GSP would be a very close second because when I think of a champion, I think of GSP. Like he just is the epitome of a champion. You know, he was beloved by many in different countries, uh, obviously Canadian. Uh, he had a huge fan base and he never got in trouble. He never did anything bad. He was just pretty much, you know, GSP and he was the champ. So that's my opinion on that. Any final thoughts, Brandon? I, know uh, now, I mean, I was going to say, like, just another uh, couple of people that uh, that had me think about, like, you know, people who maybe should get a little bit of love. But And by the way, you were, you were right about Cyborg. I, I didn't even think about the women when I made this subject. Yeah. But Cyborg, 100 percent of I'm talking about women. Yeah. But I was just going to say uh, Dominic Cruz, you know, go, going going from WEC to the UFC as it's the champ. Easy. You know. I mean, I mean, but he still he he, but he still put in the work, even though he had the injuries. And also to another pay, another person. I mean, he was never he was never the he was never a UFC champion, but I mean, WEC champ, Uriah Faber, you know, the California kid. He he definitely he definitely put the uh, lighter weights on uh, um on the map. And then he met a guy named Jose Aldo, and you know, he kind of never got the belt back after that. But and Dominic but, Cruz, yeah, he had rivalries with both him and oh. Cruz. Uh, Dominic Cruz, I think, is the one that really ended him. Uh, cause they had that, that bit of rivalry. He could never beat Cruz. And then, yeah, Aldo just <laughs> annihilated him with those leg kicks. And like, you remember Faber's leg being like, Whoa. um, I give Aldo a lot of respect. Um, I find, like you said, it's when they're champion, but the line becomes great when you think about everything as one. And I think when it comes to, to John Jones, I just don't think anything inside the cage you can talk about. You can talk about all the stuff outside the cage, but inside the cage, he might be the greatest of all time. So uh, leave a comment. This is one of the subjects we love to hear your thoughts on. Leave a comment. Uh, let Brandon and I know who your uh, GOAT MMA champion of all time is. Uh, there's a lot of names to pick from. We gave you a few really good ones to talk about. Uh, we're talking about women. You're talking about Cyborg. You're talking about Amanda Nunez. Uh, even Ronda Rousey, like she may put women on the map. You may think she's a joke now. I know Pena and some other people do, but when it came to women's MMA, if it wasn't for her, it wouldn't be a thing in UFC. Uh, so you got to think about stuff like that as well. Um, and she was very dominant for quite a while. So something to think about. Uh, but that is all of our 
early subjects. Brandon, you ready to make some picks and get out of here so your boy can get his lead dog status back before we go on break? Sure, man. I can't go on break with you being ahead of me, man. I just can't do it. I might have to cancel this whole damn show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We will be back. Uh, but UFC Vegas 56 coming up this weekend. Alexander Volkov versus uh, Jair Rosenstrike. Uh, got some other great fights on that card as well. <laughs> Uh, we're talking about the co-main with uh, 50K Ege versus Evolov. Uh, your boy Mike Trezano's on there. Of course, you'll be talking about that fight. Uh, and just a number of other great fights, Felice Herring versus KK. Um, Damon Jackson, who I never know which side we're going to get with him. Uh, he's got another undefeated guy he's fighting. So, oh, And then Benoit St. Dennis. The last time we fought, saw him was the time they thought the referee let him almost die in the cage, but then he came back and even won the fifth round. I mean, you're talking about a guy with just – Heart for days, former French military. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the main event. Uh, Alexander Volkov versus uh, Jair Rosenstrike. Tell me who you got and tell me why. Uh, I'm going to go with Volkov, man. Like, I'm always going to pack over him. And just to me, man, with Rosenstrike, man, just to me, seem like, it seems like every time he steps up in competition, he doesn't meet it. You know, he, he always, he always to me, wilters. Uh, I mean, besides his uh, – uh, miraculous win over over Overeem, which of course he was losing that fight until like the last five seconds. But I just think I just think Volkov Volkov's just good, you know, too good, a veteran of the game. Uh, I mean, also too Volkov does have some grappling skills, so he could take Rosenstruck down. Like I said, you know, if this fight stays standing, Rose, Rosenstruck does have a chance. But I just think I just think Volkov is just, just a better martial artist. I think you could say the same about Volkov. Every time he steps up, he gets stopped or beat. Um, both lost to Cyril, both lost to Blake, like, uh, who was it? Uh, Volkov just lost to Aspinall. Um, this was a tough fight for me to pick. I think I'm taking Rosenstrike only because I think Volkov doesn't really use his wrestling very much unless he has to. And if he gets into a firefight early, Rosenstrike's probably the one heavyweight you don't want to get in a firefight with just because of his pure, like, kickboxing skills. Um, uh, it's tough, man, but I think I'm gonna take Rosenstrike. But this is a pick and fight. I wouldn't be surprised to see Volkov win, uh, kind of slow him down and wrestle him for three rounds or five rounds. But I think both guys would be exhausted by the end of this fight anyway. Um, that's why I kind of think Rosenstrike might get the stoppage in the second round or something like that. But we'll see. Volkov doesn't get stopped very often, so um, definitely up in the air. Um, over in the co main event, we do got uh, Dan 50k Ege versus uh. Mavsar, Evelof, uh, who you got in this one? Uh, I'm gonna go with Dan Ige. You know, like I said, I, I know, I know, I know he wants to bounce back. Uh, you know, from his last performance. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go with Dan Ige, man. Just see what, just see what he's got. You know. No love for the 15 and 0 uh, undefeated fighter. He just, beat your boy, he just beat your boy Dawadu. I mean, I'm just, I'm just going, I'm just going with Dan Ige. You know, like I said, he, had, you know, he, had, he, had, he has the experience. Um, you know, like I said, I, I just, I think, I just think he wants to bounce back. I'm actually taking uh, Evelov. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name, uh, not because he's undefeated, but just because who he's fought recently. I mean, he just went through Dawadu. Uh, he got the split decision against Lentz, but then he beat Grundy, Barzola, Choi. I mean, he comes from M1, which we know a lot of those fighters from M1 come over really ready for the prime time. They come out ready for the UFC, and then he's won five straight UFC fights. So I think he slept on. I think this co-main event is his chance to really, all right, let, let the world know because we know Ige can come up and put on a show. We know he's been known to make big performances in the UFC. If he beats somebody like Ige, his net, his stock goes way up. So I think this is his chance to shine um, in that featherweight division, which is already overly crowded. Um especially towards the top with contenders like, you know, you know, Cater. And we just talked about Ortega and Rodriguez fighting each other and stuff. This is his chance. So I'm going to take Envil off in this one. Uh, I don't think it's any shock, but go ahead and tell us who your uh, fight pick is of the day. Man, you know, I got to go with my boy, Mike. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to go with Trezano. I'm saying it's, it's the next fight. Uh, or, you know, right, uh, it's the fight right before the co-main. Uh, like I said, man, you know, Trezano, Trezano's really been putting in the work. Like I said, we got another another new person, you know, kind of coming into the UFC. Uh, like I said, uh, I just I, I think I think a lot of people kind of do forget about you know how how good Mike really is, you know how technical he is, and I think I think this is his chance to re to really to really show the world again. 
Yeah, I mean, he had a tough loss against Dowadu. I will say about Am- Amita, he his loss came to uh, Daniel Helberger uh, in the Dana White Contender Series, right? Um, Helberger is actually like because we talk about him all uh, once in a while on um, Crossing Borders with Alex because he comes from Luke's Fight League um, down in Mexico. That kid is going to be a superstar. So losing to him is not a uh, like a big deal. Like it, it's not a, a shame. Almeida went back to jungle fights, won a fight. And here he is back in the UFC, um, getting his opportunity funny enough before Daniel Huber. Um, but here he is. So it's going to be a tough fight for Mike. I'm interested to see how this one plays out because it's a chance for Mike to bounce back. It's also a chance for this kid to make his name on a UFC veteran. So it, it's going to be an interesting fight uh, to see how that one plays out. Uh, my fight pick of the night is uh, an, I know I'm a butcher. I just think it's going to be an absolutely crazy fight. But uh, Fakaredinov uh, versus uh, Mikaladis, uh, I think is going to be probably one of the fight of the nights. Um, I got Fakaredinov. Uh, he's 18 and one, uh, going against uh, Mikaladis, 13 and five. I think he's another one of those international fighters coming over, looking to make a name for himself. And I think he puts on a show every time he puts on. He comes in there and fights. Uh, the last time we saw him was. Yeah, uh, he's fought overseas, UAE, GFC, a couple other places you might not have heard of. But if you know anything about those promotions, especially uh, UAE Warriors over there in, uh, you know, uh, Abu Dhabi, they fight a lot with the Dagestani guys. They fight a lot with the guys in Brave. Um, So this is another guy making his debut in the UFC that could make a big name. And like I said, he's 15-1, and uh, just a tremendous fighter. So actually, I think he might be 18-1, and 18-1. So keep an eye on that one. Uh, I like to kind of showcase a little bit of fights you might not have heard of before. Um, there was a lot of other good fights on this card to pick from, but I wanted to kind of, you know, take a look at somebody you might not be looking at. And then also on this card, before we get out of here, one fight I almost picked, because every time I pick the ladies' fights, I get wrong. So I stay away from Brandon's territory from now on, unless I have to. Uh, but Aaron Blanchard versus, versus J.J. Aldridge is going to be a great fight. Up in the car, Felice Herrings versus Carolina, like, that's going to be a barn burner. Uh, I'm excited to see Felice Herring back, see if she's back from the injury and if she's good to go. It's been a while. Uh, Alonzo Menifield, I think he's going to be fun to watch. Um, Stolte versus St. Denise, like I said, that's going to be a great fight. Um, and then protect your neck, Joe Selecki, right there for your backyard in CFFC. Uh, he's doing his thing against the Silva Colio. And Selecki just beat Jim Miller, didn't he, last time? So, uh, Or was that Jim Miller's win? I think Selecki won that fight, right? I don't know. I mean, Jim Miller's uh, been. He, he beat Jim Miller, but lost to Jared Gordon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Selecki's always fun to watch, always looking for that guillotine or some kind of choke. Uh, Brandon, before we get out of here, any final thoughts on this card? Yeah, no, like you said, uh, the first fight of the night, uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to the Aaron Blanchfield JJ Aldridge fight. Like I said, I usually always pick against JJ Aldridge, and then she always makes me look bad, but I think this time Aaron, Aaron Blanchfield is going to get the job done uh, on, on JJ Aldridge. What do you think about the Kareem Silva uh, Botello fight? I mean, it should be. I mean, it should, it should be. A, it should be a good one as well. You know, that's gonna be like like people expect them to come out and, and blast each other, but that could be a jujitsu classic. Like those, both of them are really good on the ground. Yeah, so that, that could actually be something that people don't expect, like on the ground. And then the Felice Herring fight against Carolina. What, what do you think of that one? I mean, I mean, of course, I'm looking forward to that. Like, say, both of them, both of them have been off for a while. So, I mean, it's. It's kind of it's gonna be interesting to see. Like I said, you Wasn't know, Carolina I think, gonna retire last time. I I want to say so because I mean, like I said, she she's been having some bad losses. Like I want to say she said it a couple stopped. times in a row. Like she said she was retiring before the last fight that she came out and she lost again. Yeah. Um, I want to say it was against yeah against Jessica Penny, and then she's like, all right, well I'm really done this time, and now here she is again. She yeah. lost five in a row. So, I mean, but all the top people, yeah, all former either former or, or future. Penny, former champ in Invicta. Grosso's a contender. Jan's a contender. Watterson's a former uh, Invicta champ. champion. Yep. And then uh, Andrade's a former champ. So not bad losses, but, you know, it is what it is, right? You can't win. You can't win. So it gets it weighs on your mental sometimes. Uh, well, I think that's enough for us. Uh, we will be back in two, in two and a half weeks, three weeks, whatever, uh, right after Father's Day. Uh, Brandon's fight is June 18th. Make sure you uh, follow him on social media, figure out how to watch. I know Gut Check's going to stream it, I believe, on their website or one of the websites they work with. So 
Uh, make sure you tune in. Make sure you're rocking your mechanic gear. Go ahead and fight us first out shop. Get the mechanic gear uh, merch and go ahead and support your boy. Um, I know I'm always the bad guy and everybody loves Brandon, but, you know, go ahead. Even I'll be rooting for this guy uh, come June 18th. Um, also, I don't really like Anthony Dill. I just don't like him. No offense, Anthony. I'm sure you're a good dude, but he's already coming on social media talking about how he's going to end you and everything else, even though he's taking his fight on short notice, coming up in weight and everything else that's against him. And no disrespect, because anybody can win. I mean, I love you to death, Brandon, but any anybody can win. I know mm-hmm. you're I know you're taking it seriously. I know you're not underestimating this guy at all. Um, but I think he should have a little bit more humility coming up. And then I don't really root for any I don't know. It's always weird when I see somebody with a face tattoo, unless you're Mike Tyson. Yeah. I was gonna say he looks like Stitch is the rapper, you know. <laughs> so it's Kashi 69 going over. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that is that. Uh, I definitely wish you well, my friend, if I don't talk to you before the show. I- I'm sure I'll talk to you online and stuff like that before uh, the 18th. But I definitely wish you well. Uh, everybody leave a comment, a like. Uh, let us know what you love, what you don't like. Maybe we can come up with some new segments when we come back. we got a few weeks to kind of work on things for the second half of the year. Um, and go ahead and root for your boy. Root for everybody that I pick and nobody that he picks so I can get my throne back. It's hurting me. My soul is hurting yeah. I got to do some Jedi mind tricks. That's why I was Yoda today. Your mind. And maybe I watched a little bit of Wu-Tang uh, American Saga too much. But whatever. Anyway, any final words, Brandon? All right, guys, just remember, like, subscribe, comment, you know, share the video, man. Let the people know about the show. All right. For the mechanic, Brandon Catino, I'm Mike Ginn. This is Art of MMA. We'll see you soon. We're out.